Good evening, everybody. I'm Dave Eldon. With me is Dalton Grimes, and what is we've up, got everyone? a special treat for all of you today. Brought to you by Indiana's newest level two judge. Congratulations! Oh, thank you, thank you. It's uh, it's pretty great being here. You know, I got myself here, and I've got you there, and I guess you could say that we've got a pretty uh great setup going. Yeah, you know, you know actually, the newest LT judge and. Uh, I, I believe without, if, if we exempt Patrick Nelson, I believe the oldest L2 judge in Indiana also. For that, Patrick Patrick actually uh, was, oh, was an L2 okay. a little bit before I was. but mm, So we're I, close. I believe that everybody else who was in Indiana and was a level 2 when I got it is either not in Indiana anymore or not an L2 anymore. So, okay, so yeah. Patrick moved in is what you're saying? Uh, no, Patrick... Wait, what? Nelson yeah. moved in? Patrick was an L2 before me. So I said everyone else. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. So I guess what you could say is we've got a pretty cool link here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. So our, our Soul Bond episode, is that what we're doing today? Soul Bond! Boy. Uh, no. One day, one day they'll print enough Soul Bond cars that we can do a whole hour long. That would be a fun mechanic to go I, I mean, we, we could do an hour on it right now, but... <laughs> Um, you know, it, it, it wouldn't would be, be warranted. A because, lot of commentary. Well, no, 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 no. It's actually very complicated, uh, or at least some some parts of it are kind of complicated. I, I'm sure that we could stretch it out to be an hour if we like went into real detail with all the example questions. How exciting! I mean, okay, for for some people, some people get excited about stuff like that. What certain, are... certain types of people. Man. All right. So I'm gonna pass. Okay. Uh, so instead, I think we should just talk about the linked abilities. All right. That well, that's that's a that's a good one too. I I was kind of excited. We we decided this topic uh, a while back, and I uh, th this is one of those things that people don't talk about a whole lot because yep. there isn't a whole lot of. Um, really weird unintuitive stuff with linked abilities once you get past the learning how they work and mm -hmm. learning what they all do but at the same time because they don't get a lot of publicity like that it's also the sort of thing that if if you encounter somebody who has not yet had it uh, shown to them how they work or has not yet done the research themselves it's a, a very interesting topic and it's a very a, a lot of really nice cards that you don't get to talk about a whole lot so I, i'm excited for this one to be you? honest i think that the plurality of calls that i receive as a judge at large events come from one specific card and one linked ability really mm -hmm. really yep i would say so i'll let you know when we get there i'm gonna keep you in suspense is it course or crew fix i said <laughs> i'll let you know when we get there okay okay david so <sighs> Um, that is that is one of my favorite magic cards, Course of Crucifix, uh, or or at least it was after it rotated out of standard. Ah, there perfect. Were, there Good. were a, there were a lot of judge calls about Course of Crucifix back in the old Why? day. But it was it was, it was really playable. Well, yeah, and, and it also like like nobody would remember to flip it over, or people would like keep oh, flipping okay. it over after it died, so they'd get an LEC. Yeah, I could. Or like that. two cards would stick together when they were flipping it over, so they'd get an LEC. Um, there are a lot of LECs for that just, card. Just be better. Yeah. All right. So, what is a linked ability? If you if you've never heard the term before, you are not alone. That is that is a very a very true statement. There are uh, a lot of judges who go their entire uh, or a, a large portion of their career without having to know what they are or how they work. But uh, what is it? Uh, okay. So whenever whenever I think about linked abilities. Have you ever watched Avatar The Last Airbender? Of course. Of course. Of course. Of course. So you remember the scene where Zuko is teaching his protege uh, kid who he moves into the house with and he stays for a little while in uh, Zuko alone. He tells the kid how to how to use the broadswords. And he tells him, don't think of them as two halves of the same, or don't think of them as separate weapons, because they're not. They're two halves of the same weapon. And that's that's what linked abilities are. That's, that's exactly how sure, linked abilities David. work. Great. And I didn't get that far in Avatar. Oh, didn't you? No. I, I, I asked if you'd watched it. I was trying to I, avoid I, the spoilers. I used to watch Spoiler it. Spoiler alert, by the way. If, if anybody uh, hasn't seen that episode, it's a great episode. Um, but yeah, so that's, that, is, that is a thing that happened. And uh, it, was, it was in the uh, Zuko Alone episode. So if you, you get to that one, you can get excited for it. But uh, that, is, that is also how linked abilities work. Because linked abilities might look like separate abilities, but they're really not. Mm -hmm. uh, conceptually they go together and because they go together stuff that one ability does is the only stuff that the other ability looks for and so don't worry if that's a little abstract it kind of is we, we didn't get too specific on it but we will believe me we will 
yeah. we have lots of exciting examples. And I know that we, you know, we keep saying, oh, well, you may never know a linked ability, but I guarantee that you've played with them before. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. At their base, they're pretty intuitive, and, you know, there's not a whole lot of issues there. But when you really look into the rules of what constitutes and what is a linked ability, that's when you get some confusion. Yes. And the, the, other, the other issue con that tends to come up is... Um, as long as they're both together, they work perfectly, mm -hmm. and there's there's really no questions that are really that tricky about stuff that has linked abilities working as intended. Where you get into a problem though is you get into a situation where you have like half of a linked ability there, but the other half isn't, and there's various ways that that can <laughs> come about. Yeah, but those are those are where I have a feeling we're gonna look at that just tonight. One or two. <laughs> Uh, yeah, those are where the, the real kind of interesting rules questions tend to come up is, is because if they're together, there's no problems. But if, if you only have one of them, then that, that can be a problem because you, you don't really know what you're supposed to do with the stuff that the other ability was supposed to be giving you. It's like when you uh, are baking and it says to I add the baking. flour, but you look at the ingredients and there's no flour. Mm. And you're just like, well, darn it. That's linked abilities. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna use that. That's actually really good. What, not using flour? It, no. Baking. Okay. Baking is good. I have some delicious cookies upstairs and I'm Ooh. thinking about them right now. I like some cookie brownies at home. Ooh, oh boy. So, so let's we're just gonna torture you with yes, food. Yes. We're gonna change to a food food uh, show after this episode. Is it? Chefing for the win? Chefing for the win. Chefing cooking for, for the win. win. It's cooking for the win. Yeah, cooking's too cliche. Uh, I mean, so let's <laughs> let's take a look at some some linked abilities. Well, let's start our show, Dave. <laughs> this is this is my uh, this is my go to card for linked abilities. It's Isochron Scepter. I have a, have a deep emotional bond with Isochron Scepter because it was the first linked ability card that I ever played uh, back Ooh. in the oldy days, mirrored in one, and Ooh. I still have my playset of Isochron oh, Scepters. Okay. And the original artwork is the best artwork for that as a result of my deep emotional bond that I have with the OG Meridian 1. Uh, this one is okay, and the FNM promo one was kind of okay, but really the this this is this is what this is what it is. That's that's the real Isochron Scepter. So if you look at it, uh, imprint uh, pretty much uh, I, I do believe every imprint card is the linked ability. So imprint was a, a mechanic that they had back in back in Mirrodin One, and what it would do is when it enters the battlefield, you exile a card, and you you could exile the cards from all all kinds of different places. Isochron Scepter has you exile one from your hand. There are other ones that we'll look at later that you know did other stuff but then the second ability says you may copy the exiled card and if you do you can cast the copy without paying its mana cost so clearly the the second ability refers to a card that's exiled but it only refers to the cards that were exiled with the linked ability of the first ability so that the imprint thing can remove it and then the second ability lets you cast it and neither one of those abilities really makes a lot of sense by itself but when you come together uh, they, they make perfect sense, and they really act as one big ability that happens to be split into two for game design reasons. Mm -hmm. So, they're pretty cool. I like them a lot. And there are a lot of shenanigans there you can is. get into with linked abilities. And, and uh, so this is an excellent example, but you're going to see tonight that there are so many different varieties. A lot of different types of linked abilities. There's a, big list. There's a big list in our old friend, our favorite 200-page document, the CR. Yes. And uh, yeah, let's let's take a look at some of them. So this is this is uh, an Isochron Scepter. This is an example of the, the first type, an object that has an activated or triggered ability printed on it that instructs a player to exile one or more cards, and then an ability that refers to the exiled cards or cards exiled with this object. So those abilities are, are examples of abilities that are linked together. So this has two abilities. This first ability exiles a card from your hand, and the second ability refers to the exiled card. <clears throat> and so therefore, these abilities aren't linked. Uh, some, other, some other exciting examples of, of that type of thing. Um, this is an, another one of my favorites. Ooh, boy. Hmm. A deep emotional connection with this one as well. Panoptic Mirror. So with, with this one, you see you don't exile from your hand. You exile... Um, or you, you do exile from your hand, but you have to like mm. uh, pay X and then you can repeat. You can you can exile more of them, and then every turn you get to to play another copy of it. Uh, another another exciting um, linked ability from from the same block, duplicate. I'm sure a lot of cube players are uh, big fans of this one. Yeah. And then uh, oblivion ring is another another example of a linked ability of this type. So you exile a, a permanent 
with the uh, comes into play ability, and then when you leave the battlefield, then you return the exiled card to its owner's hand. All right. I think this might have been the first linked ability card I oh is it ever really played? Okay. So there's mine. So All right. Let's move on to our next type of linked ability. Yeah, sure thing. And the important thing to remember is that a lot of these are going to seem similar, but they have very different applications. So the next example of a linked ability would be if an object has an ability printed on that generates a replacement effect, which causes one or more cards to be exiled, and an ability printed on it that refers either to the exiled cards or to cards exiled with that object. Um, those abilities would be linked. So can you uh, tell me an example of this uh, uh, without without uh, looking at the prepared uh, examples that now I want everybody to be aware of I, how much work and, and effort it took to actually like come up with actual cards that are examples of each different types of linked abilities, because, you know, that's that was actually a, a really fun and exciting rules challenge for me. And, mm -hmm. and I was I was able to get uh, a lot of them myself. I had to ask for help. on. So on I see you have that one pulled up, David. Yeah. So I'm going to say share. Void I Maw. I will share. Uh, uh, no, we're, we're fading. Uh, so I, I took the Void Maw out of your library, and mm -hmm. then I gave you the shared faith that, that I had. Great. And so uh, Void Maw would indeed be another example of it. So both of these uh, exile, and, and you see they exile from different spots. So this this one exiles stuff that would be going to the graveyard, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the shared fate one uh, exiles cards from the top of the libraries. And so both of them also have an ability that say uh, something about the cards that get exiled. So mm -hmm. this this one has the the ability to let you uh, look at them and play them when they're exiled. And the Void Maw is actually really interesting. One of one of very few cards that, that lets you put a card that was removed with Void Maw into its owner's graveyard. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's that's going to come up in in another one. It's like the OG. Uh processor yes, yes in fact uh I, I would love to see the the creature type of this errated to be processor i think that would be really cool mm -hmm. so okay that's that's the the second type uh the third type uh it, it activated or triggered ability printed on it that puts one or more objects onto the battlefield and an ability that pr uh refers to cards put onto the battlefield with this object so david yes i know that there is no possible way you could have a card prepared for this it's just so niche and so this it is it is niche. This one actually was one of the more difficult ones to find uh, example cards for. Uh, so for for this, I, I chose the card Diabolic Servitude. So when it enters the battlefield, you return target card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and then uh, you have uh, when it leaves the battlefield, you exile a card put onto the battlefield with Diabolic Servitude. So yeah, it's it is an activated or is a, is a triggered ability that puts an object onto the battlefield, and then another ability printed on it that refers to the card that was put onto the battlefield with this this object, and uh, an another example would be we're, we're digging we're digging deep into the crypt here. Yeah, the tombstone we're... stairwell. This is not what the oracle text says. The or the oracle text um, is actually very similar with this card. But yeah, you put the zombie tokens onto into play, uh, and, it, and it's what what is it? It's, uh, for each creature in your graveyard. Spawn token. Yeah, I, th I think they fixed those to be like regular zombie tokens. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, and count as zombies. Yeah, well, okay. well I mean, like the, this is back before they had cards that had two creature types. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, like all the legendary things. Legend was a creature type. Yeah. So like all the legendary creatures had to have like text on them that says this counts as a vampire or this counts as an angel or whatever. Man, magic was great. Boy, oh boy, just like Richard Garfield intended. Yep. And so yeah, at the end of turn, uh, or if Tombstone Stairwell leaves the battlefield, you bury all of those tokens. Uh, and the the Oracle text does say put onto the battlefield with Tombstone Stairwell. And so, yes, yeah, so those abilities are linked in the same way. Okay, so let me hit number four here. So we've got, if an object has an ability printed on it that causes a player to choose a value or name a card, and an ability printed on it that refers to the chosen value or the last chosen value or even the named card, those abilities are linked. So my example, this is probably the card I receive the most judge calls on. Is it? Um, yeah. Uh, no, it's actually Zorius. Oh, uh, but it is meddling mage. I thought you were gonna go with the shapeshifter, and I was I was definitely I was definitely prepared for that one. No, I so, get a lot of judge calls about shapeshifter. So what I get with this one is, with the prevalence of five color humans, ah uh, yes, you know the player will say, oh I'll bolt you for three, okay, and they go, oh well can I activate meddling mage or activate, uh, ether vial and flash and meddling mage to name bolt? Uh, I mean you could. You, you can. To do. You totally can. 
but that card's already cast. Yes. Um, so yeah, the the meddling mage has two abilities. One one that says uh, name a non land card. So that that would be uh, the the name a card, mm -hmm. and uh, it also refers to the named card. So so what about what about these other ones? The like choose a value or the uh, you know so, something the last chosen value. You like legacy, right? Sure do. So I bet you you love my friend True. I sure do. This is my favorite legacy card. There's, there might be there might be another more like relevant. Do, do I need to leave this show? There might be another more relevant card. Uh, but, but Everyone's favorite value. true name nemesis. Yeah. Um, so when it enters that or as it enters, so if you saw our thing on replacement effect. Yes, yes. This is a replacement effect. Uh, replacement effect with a linked ability. Yes, and the the replacement effect has an ability linked to it. Yeah. So uh, this this is uh, another another thing that that you can have uh, happen sometimes is the uh, the value doesn't have to be just just like a player so another another very very common thing to, to see happen would be like you choose a color uh, that, that would be another one uh, the naming the card is also thematically close to it and that's why it's included in the same linked ability mm -hmm. but yeah that that is uh, the the what, what number we have to four yeah four, maybe. All right. Oh, oh boy, this is this is this next one's one of my favorite ones. I don't know how you doing, chat. Are we following along pretty well? Nah, this is this is great. Everybody loves this this linked ability stuff. <laughs> Gosh, I wish. Oh well, thank you, Mister Cutie Mark Mason. I yeah. do appreciate that. You can uh, you can send the the donations directly to uh, our personal. <laughs> We we don't have a donate button. We're not we're not mainstream enough to have, to have a donate button. Give me a time and a place. And yeah, I was gonna say. We, we <laughs> the two of there. us could take donations. <laughs> I guess if you want. Are you saying we need a better quality microphone or a, a re realer webcam? So nah. okay. Oh boy, this this one is one of my favorites. I know they can't see our microphone, but it's 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 great. It's yes. a great microphone. If you've been to a judge conference, you've seen it. <laughs> all right. So number five. What are we looking at, David? Okay, so this is this is great. If an object has an ability printed on it that causes a player to choose from between two or more words that otherwise have no rules meaning, and another ability printed on it that refers to a choice involving one or more of those words, these abilities are linked. Okay, so uh, I, again, in the <laughs> guys, so are, tell us if you know what that means. Have, have you ever seen this card before? Uh, Not that one. Yeah, that this one. this one, another angel, another very powerful, you know, in, in some senses. So Archangel of Strife lets you choose war and peace, and of course those are words that have otherwise no rules meaning. And another ability, uh, the the creatures controlled by players who chose war get plus three plus zero, oh, and creatures controlled by players who chose peace get plus zero plus three. So this is interesting. This is this is great because it, it illustrates another important point about linked abilities, which is that one ability can be linked. To two or more abilities and uh, it, it's not they, they don't always just occur in pairs sometimes you have like I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah 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 so so like his ability can be linked to both of my perfect. abilities and then maybe we could have a third one in there too everything is great so I, I don't know of any right off the top of my head that are linked to three abilities I think there might be but uh, certainly this is an example of I, there have to be some other cards to, like dice rolling ones be. there has to be uh, okay, so this this one is an example of, of one ability that's linked to two other abilities. So the choosing war and peace is linked to the uh, ability that gives your war creatures plus three plus zero, oh, and the ability uh, that gives your peace creatures plus zero plus three. So this this is one ability that is linked to two other abilities. Paradise Plume is the example uh, that they give in the CR when they talk about that, and uh, Paradise Plume is another great example card. Um, but it's not a, it's not the right one. What's what's the Paradise Mantle? Mantle is the card, mm. right? So maybe not. Maybe I need to read the CR some more. I don't I don't think I'm familiar enough with with that section of the CR. They they did. They, hmm. We'll David. we'll have to think about it some more. David. I suppose. Yeah. Hey 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 no 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 it was Paradise Plume right? Yeah this works. Yeah, because because as Paradise Plume comes into play, you choose a color. So that's that's one type of okay, linked ability, great. and that has whenever a player plays a card of the chosen color. So that's that's one ability that's linked to the first ability, mm -hmm. and then add tap add one amount of the chosen color to your mana pool. So yeah, that's those those two abilities are both linked to the the first ability. I'm so I was pretty right. certain I right. that my great grandma had a feather duster that looked like that. It sure really now yeah. now did did your great grandmother look anything like this? 
oh my gosh, where did you find that? It's like, no. Oh, too bad. Ashiok is another example of a card that has two abilities linked to it. So the the put a creature card with converted mana cost X exiled with Ashiok is linked to not just the first ability, but also to the last ability. Mm -hmm. So either either one of these exiling creature cards can give you creatures with the, the middle ability. So the middle ability is actually linked to both of those. I'm not sure how familiar you are with the game of Magic, but uh, it is colloquially referred to as Splashyok. Splashyok? Oh, yeah. Splashyok. Oh, yeah. Really, really nice. I, I want you too. to seem... I've splashed I've splashed a fourth color for Ashiok. I want you to too. seem, uh, you know, like you know what's going on here, David. Yeah. And after that uh, plume incident. Hey, hey, I got the right card. <laughs> I just doubted myself. Never doubt yourself as a judge. Always always make sure you do. Uh, okay, mm. so here's here's another really exciting one. Uh, so this this is another example of a... And, and this is why I love this this specific type of linked abilities. Because look at this. Look at this. So with, with Tyrant's Choice, you get to choose... Uh, uh, you get to vote for either death or torture... And both, both great are, options. Yeah, great options if you're a tyrant. And those abilities, uh, you know, those, those are words that otherwise have no rules meaning. And and uh, they they also have an ability. There, there's also an ability printed on it that refers to the choice involving those words. And so Ooh. this this would indeed be a uh, example of a card that has linked abilities. And it's it's interesting because. There's there's only one ability on this card. It's it's all one ability, so it's linked to itself, which is another thing that can happen. You can have an ability that's linked to itself. So Magic is great. It is. It's great. And so that this is, you, you can see why I was excited. <laughs> you can see why I was excited yes, when I was talking I about tell. this. Okay, so I, I think that's enough for for that specific type. Yeah. What, what else? Cons and dragons is a pretty good one too. Oh no, it is not. No, it is no? not. No. And uh, the the reason is because that's coming up later. There there is another rule that specifically talks about anchor words and that that is where we will be talking about the cons and dragons and believe me we will be talking about those but yes yes the anchor words actually um have their own special linked ability rule in the cr ah uh, yes chad of course <laughs> you know i was testing you yeah yeah uh, i mean i wouldn't have known it if i didn't like no. have to it's great have to research it all right so let me bounce back all right so if an object has an ability printed on it that causes a player to a player to pay a cost as it enters the battlefield, and an ability printed on it that refers to the cost paid as the object entered the battlefield. Those are linked. Oh yes. So oh, yes. let me tell you about my boy or girl. I don't know. Perxian processor. Yes. It's a pretty swell magic card. It was like if, if <laughs> Have you, you were ever playing heard magic, of it? if I'm you were, surprised. Oh boy, if you were playing magic when this card was in standard, you definitely would have heard of it because this was like the finisher card for these decks, and then people would have like battles. Mm -hmm. um like because like they they both be playing for icing processor decks and so like you, you had to you had to really be careful about like how much life you paid because uh -huh. if, if you were up on life that was huge because you would be putting out like 18 18 tokens when they were only putting out 17 17 tokens <laughs> ah, the and, yeah and, and like you know usually 17 18 doesn't really make a big difference but when when you're getting the 18 18s mm -hmm. and they're getting the 17 17s that's huge yes. so so this was actually like a very played card Back in the oldie days, uh, when, when this was in standard, and uh, so so as it enters the battlefield, you pay any amount of life, and uh, you get an XX token, XX minion token. Might be putting that bad boy in commander. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, uh, you can pay a lot more than eighteen life in commander. Oh yes, you can. I uh, run my chest of the black rose, so I need to make sure I'm not on the throne. That's oh, a really oh, good way okay. of doing it. Yeah, you can get a lot of life out of it. All right, let me tell you about everyone's favorite. Is it a tree folk now? It is uh, an elemental. It's still an elemental? Yeah, I, I, I do. I know it's called it wood elemental. It's a wood elemental. Like, it's, look at it. It's not a look tree at it. folk elemental. Look at it. Yeah, look at it. I know. It, it certainly appears to be a tree of some sort. Um, a tree folk. And uh, if you've never heard of this exciting magic card, you probably... Uh, <laughs> You're probably losing. a better player. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, you, you might be losing brain cells as you look at this this picture here. But this is another example. Uh, so as it enters the battlefield, you can sacrifice any number of untapped forests. Untapped after you only. After you tapped four mana. Magic can't be too powerful. So remember, remember, we're tapping four mana to get a zero, zero. And then you have to like sack some lands to like make it bigger. So mm -hmm. the, the creature power level has certainly increased 
least a little bit since the days of the wood elemental which now basically only serves as a great example of a linked ability uh that refers to a cost pay <laughs> you as should never pay yeah, you, you know you could you could all right, all right, so here here we have another another. Uh, all right, this this one's not quite as interesting, but it, it it's it's interesting from the sense that there isn't a lot of cards that have this type of ability. So if an object has both a static ability and one or more triggered abilities printed on it in the same paragraph, each of those triggered abilities is linked to the static ability. Don't you love that they have to specify in the same paragraph? No, that that's important. Uh, because otherwise, what would happen is um, it, would, it would fall under one of the previous ones. I just love that you know a, a paragraph is recognized as oh yeah no 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 the, pa the paragraph is chunks of text the, no 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 it's it's line break if there's a line break mm -hmm. then that's that's where the paragraph and that's that's really important for certain cards uh, like for example hmm, what was it oh yes chain oh yeah that's a good one so if you take a look at Gonti. The, uh, the printing of Gonti has two abilities. Huge amount of text. Yeah, look at it. And uh, so if you notice, the for as long as that card remains exiled is part of the same ability as the when Gonti enters the battlefield, which means mm -hmm. that it is part of the ability that exiles it, mm -hmm. which means that if Gonti leaves the battlefield, you can still look at it and you can still play it. If the for as long as that card remains exiled was a separate paragraph from the when Gonti enters the battlefield. Mm -hmm. That would mean it would just a separate ability, which would mean that as soon as Gonti left the battlefield, there wouldn't be an ability letting you look at it and play it anymore. Mm -hmm. So the, the paragraph thing seems a little trivial, but the, the paragraphs have very, very real consequences when it comes to templating. And uh, especially in the case of Gonti, for example, mm -hmm. uh, the... C certain certain cell phones would display the text of Gonti so that the four was on a new line, so it looked like they were separate abilities. And s some judges might have missed a judge call uh, oh, as a no. result of that specific uh, uh, type typing issue. So remember, kids, read those friendly cards. Well, no, no, like I read the card, I did everything right, but the problem was that my phone like let me down by by making it look like that there mm -hmm. was a, a separate paragraph there where it really wasn't. And okay, so this is this is an example of two abilities that are linked to each other within the same paragraph. Mm -hmm. And this is this is Karanos. Karanos says, reveal the first card you draw on each of your turns. This is a static ability. And whenever you draw a land card this way, draw a card. That is a triggered ability in the same paragraph. So those abilities are linked. And look, another triggered ability, ah! even in the same paragraph that already had. So uh, the whenever you reveal a non-land card this way, that is also linked to the reveal the first card you draw. So both of those uh, triggered abilities are linked to the static ability telling you to reveal the top. Man, the I love first that card art so much. It is, it's really awesome. So, um, so, so usually for my second example, I try and like think of a different style of card, but really I could not. Um, the only, uh, as far as I know, static abilities in Magic that have triggered abilities in the same text uh, or in the same paragraph are ones that say reveal the the first card you draw on each of your turns and then whenever you reveal that x card those are I, I think there's one more card that i found when i was looking uh that has this same style of ability mm -hmm. and so that is that is in fact the uh type of ability that they use that that rule for mm -hmm. so that's cool fantastic for, for some people it's cool all right so next one next one yes so this is actually coming back a little bit with uh with Dominaria coming yes, back. Yes, so, uh, we, we were really excited about this one to see uh, Dominaria. So if you're back. hitting that pre-release tomorrow night you will be seeing You will be seeing this this type of linked ability coming yeah. into play very, very much. Can you guess it? All right. All right, so if an object has a kicker ability printed on it, yeah. an ability printed on it that refers to whether the object was kicked, those abilities are linked. The second refers only to whether the intent to pay the kicker cost is listed in the... To pay the kicker cost listed in the first was declared as the object was cast as a spell. If kicker ability lists multiple costs, it will have multiple abilities linked to it. Yep, just like Stormscape Battle Mage. This has a white kicker cost and a two and a black kicker cost. And you can see there are multiple abilities linked to those. So if you kickers. got a seven, seven mana line yeah, just, around, just you like can get in a your great pocket. Two -two. Yeah, you can get a solid two two where you gain three life and then you destroy a creature. Okay, the destroy a creature is relevant for, for a mere six mana. Um, you know they they dropped the they dropped the cost to do that 
quite a lot back in uh, or since the days that this card was printed. Yeah. Uh, now here's Metathram. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Metathram was a creature type back mm-hmm. then. Oh, uh, it's... here's here's another one. Uh, Multi kicker. Multi kicker still is a kicker cost, and so that would still fall under this rule. And uh, the the eight hex hawks. Uh, I I like the hockey. Hockey and I have great memories together. <laughs> and uh, he he's he has kidnapped a lot of goats in his day on my side of the battlefield. Mm. Well, I think I'm that's happy. a goat. Maybe I, maybe it's a Ceridon. Uh, looks what? Yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, he's flying away. He's big. He's big. Yeah, he's a big. Bird. We could get bigger. And he, he definitely can. So is the kicker the goats? Like, are you kicking him? No, 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 no. What what happens is so he eats and gets bigger. Yeah, I, I think that's what happened. I think I think he ate he ate some goats and like for every one white you spent, you get one goat. Every uh, so we're hitting the really important questions in Magic right now. All right, now this this next one is really really interesting because right. do you want I, to do it? I, yes, yeah. Right. I I want to do this one because I have a confession to make. Uh, if an object has an ability printed on it that causes a player to pay a variable additional cost as its cast and an ability printed on it. It refers to the cost paid as this object was caught, cast. Those abilities are linked. And here's the example card for that. You can see that there is not an example card. Because I could not think of one. I could not find a card that, that uses this rule. So let me let me talk about some some kind of interesting ones that, that maybe it was. So okay, maybe maybe we can say something like uh, a toxic deluge, for example. So this is a, a variable cast. Uh, a, var- a, var- a variable cost and uh, it, it definitely has an ability that refers to the the cost that was paid but these are not um uh th- these i don't believe is, is what they were talking about um because it doesn't use the text as this object was cast um they, there is not any cards that i could find that use that specific template another another kind of like interesting one that I, that maybe it would be would be uh, this this card a very very relevant card in in many many cases the the primitive justice i mean uh it, it, was, it was it was a pretty sweet magic card uh did, did did we did we lose the the primitive justice is it not primitive enough i think it's too primitive yeah so this this is another one um that, that maybe maybe i would think could fall under it it doesn't use the the text as this object was cast though um it, it just says destroy another target artifact for each additional blah you paid. Uh, so if, if you in the chat can think of a card that, that is an example of this type of linked ability, I would be very interested to see it. And uh, definitely send us an email or a tweet at judging for the win. All right. And so this one, oh boy, it's exciting. Yeah. Were you playing back then? When, when this specific ability was... was no. In- I started in Theros block or Theros so. Block. Like, okay. right at the end of Ravnica into Theros. Okay. Um, so a little but, before your time. Yeah. The two it abilities, is sweet. It is sweet, isn't it? The two abilities represented by the champion keyword are linked abilities. Yeah, the champion... That's it. The champion a creature, and uh, that, that was that's a good one. Actually, I... Uh, hmm, let, let me think... Maybe maybe a more exciting card that, that we could give you uh, this one. So when it, whenever I do these, I always try and get like vanilla cards, so it like only has the the one ability. I don't believe there are any champions that are vanilla. Um, this this one also only has one keyword, and it, it has like no reminder text for it because Changeling uh, was was like new in that set. But uh, this Supreme Exemplar has flying, uh, and it's ten ten, so that's clearly more exciting. It's pretty great. Um, so yeah, you, you champion an elemental. Uh, the, the those are the champion ability. They had a lot of those, and those are linked abilities. So that's pretty much what we have to say about that. And uh, as as we alluded to earlier, um, the the siege the siege cards from from Cons- uh, Cons of Tarkir, uh, all all of the sieges, for example, Monastery Siege. This has a uh, so the the exact the exact text is abilities preceded by an anchor word are linked to the ability that allows a player to choose the anchor word. And so mm-hmm. that is a separate one that only is, is relevant for five cards so far. Hopefully, is there is there more is there more uh, um, ones like that? I don't think so. Not uh, yet. The anchor ones. Yeah. Um, not that I can think of. I mean, aren't you the one that's done this? I I don't know of any. I don't think there is. So we, we have we have a suggestion from the chat that uh, Bond of Agony might be an example of, of a card where you uh, pay a variable cost. And this this is like the same sort of vein 
as uh, the, the toxic deluge. As an additional cost to pay it, you pay X life. Uh, but again, you can see that, that the Bond of Agony does not include the, the text as this object was cast. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm not sure if this is the, the style of effect that was intended by this, this rule or not, but if, if it was, um, you know, that, that would be kind of interesting. Uh, but, but yeah, because, because it doesn't use the, the text as this object was cast on the card, um, it's, it's not clear to me that this is an example of that, that rule coming into play. Hmm. So we have gotten to the bottom of, of our list. Of, of, we are of here. All the different, oh, we did it. Wait, did we do it? Or, Chat, or doing so good. did we forget? Did we forget about a specific type of linked abilities? Because this is new. This is a the the most recent type of linked ability that was added in. Um, what have you done? Yes. What have you done? That's right. I I added an extra. There, there's more. But wait, there's more. Call right oh. now, and we will add one more type of linked ability. So these these abilities. There's three cards, I believe, like this from from Conspiracy that say before you shuffle your deck to start the game uh, and they let you exile a card and then it has another ability linked to that. And so this this is in fact a, a final type of linked ability. And if you've never had the, the pleasure uh, of casting casting a, um, oh boy, what did I have with it? it? It was like some stupid expensive spell. But yeah, like like I, I got the Arcane Savant and I, I cast some dumb spell with it and it was nice. great. It was exciting. So, yep, that is that is the list of all of the types of linked abilities that there are in Magic. And Yay. Yep, we did it. We did it. And hey, we still have some time left for some example questions. Example questions are always great, aren't they? Yeah. Who, I who think likes so. some who likes some example questions? While we go over these, maybe folks in chat might hit us up with some questions. Yeah, that's true. Or if there we is... We might have some answers. Sure. We, we they might, might be right. They might be wrong. Usually, but we'll have answers. Usually they're right, but, you know, that's that's what we strive for anyway. Mm -hmm. But, you know, every now and then, something slips through the cracks. All right. So you mentioned our favorite friend, my great-grandma, yes. Splash Yacht. And uh, in, indeed I did. And, and I think you have something important to ask me about that. Yes, indeed. So let's say that we exile a, a card uh, with the plus two ability, like say Grizzly Bear. It doesn't really matter which it's which card it is. Grizzly Brand? Yeah, no, 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 oh. no. Just just Grizzly Bear. It need, needs to be like something with a, a realistic mana cost that we <laughs> want to bring back here. All right. So um, later we're gonna use uh, a Banishing Light. Now uh, Banishing Light is this this card. Yeah. And that's uh, card. so so I exiled uh, a Grizzly Bear of yours with my Ashok. Yeah. And then you are going to use Banishing Light to exile my Ashiok. Haha, <laughs> I'll take that. All right. But I, I have like a naturalize or something, so I can get Ashiok back. But no problem. Oh, yeah. I was going to say you're in blue-black, but one of those is a splash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I, I'm actually... Have green. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually in blue-green like the ramp deck, and then I'm splashing black. And then I, I got the black on turn three with like a ramp and growth or something. Yeah, that's smart. Two. So, okay. Now... <laughs> Uh, that I got my Ashiok back. I want to uh -huh. use the negative two ability to to bring back the the Grizzly Bear. Can I do that? Wow, wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, I, I mean it would. Like then I'd get a an exciting two two. <laughs> the value. That value. Your three mana two two. All right. So, first, okay, okay. First side question: Does Vanishing Light have linked ability? When it enters the battlefield, exile target non land permanent and opponent controls until Vanishing Light leaves the battlefield. I'm gonna go with no. Yes, this is an example uh, of, Look at that. of a of thing I'm where they so changed good. the tech, they changed the template, and I'm sure they didn't uh, intend to lose such an awesome source of linked abilities. <laughs> uh, but effects like that this, was their whole purpose. With David. the updated template, do not have linked abilities now because uh, it's it, it doesn't fit any of the templates that we went through in the comprehensive rules. Yep. So unlike the Oblivion Ring, the Banishing Light is not a linked ability. Yeah, there's so, no Banishing Light trick. So, Sorry, okay. guys. That is, that is how that works. Now, getting back to our, our BFF Ashiok here, can I put the Grizzly Bear into play? Yeah. So looking at Ashiok's minus ability, which is the one we're focusing on, states put a creature card with rare mana cost X exiled with, with Ashiok Nightmare Weaver. So whenever a card refers to itself by a name, it stands for that object. And so when Ashiok comes back, even though it's the same physical card, it is a new object. Yes. And so this Ashiok still has linked abilities, but they're not linked to the first Ashiok. Yeah. So he cannot do that. Yeah, exactly. So the, the abilities on uh, 
the the new Ashiok after it enters the battlefield again are not linked to any previous existence because it's it's not the same Ashiok anymore. So it, it'd be just like if I played another Ashiok from my hand mm -hmm. while my first one was exiled. Like obviously I shouldn't be able to get cards that the first one exiled with the second one. Mm -hmm. So this is the same type of scenario. You can't get cards that the Alpha Ashiok exiled even after it comes back onto the battlefield because even though it's the same physical card, it's not the same game object as far as the rules are concerned. Now there is a fun new card gonna be printed. Karn Sion of Urza. Yeah, do we do we have that? I is, don't is there, know. Is there a comma in Karn Sion of Urza? I think so. Let's see if we have it. So, yes, hey, look at that. Yes, they're, they're quite good at putting these out. So, Karn's first ability is reveal the top card of your library. An opponent chooses one of them, put this card into your hand, the other with a silver counter on it. Yes. And exile the other with a silver counter. So if you play a new Karn, yes. can you get a card with its minus ability? So, uh, Karn says to put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. So notice that we are not referring to cards exiled with Karn. Mm -hmm. We're referring to cards with a silver counter on them. And anything can have a silver counter on it. No problem at yep. all. Just like uh, Haphazard Bombardment, anything can have an aim counter on it if you try hard enough. Yep. And uh, just, just like with the Haphazard Bombardment, the silver counters are indistinguishable as far as the game is concerned. Mm -hmm. The game doesn't care whether... The card is exiled with the silver counter on it from this Karn or from that Karn because it does not say on Karn that Karn had to exile it or, you know, refers to exiled with Karn in some way. These mm -hmm. abilities are not linked abilities, which means that it is perfectly legit to use the minus one to recover a card that you got with a previous Karn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I know we've mentioned this before on Judging for the Win, but just because two things look similar by no means means they are yeah absolutely this, and you this is a, never... a linked abilities especially like tricky with stuff like that because it linked abilities has a lot of templates that look very similar to each other but they behave in different ways mm -hmm. yep great great question all right so i got another one for you sure and uh this one won't take you by surprise here <laughs> All right, so Amy is playing and has a quicksilver elemental out. You, you've never heard of this uh, limited all-star. So take a second, revel in its glory. Yeah, let, let it all sink in there, friends. Okay, so we're going to have it become a copy of my Bane Alley Broker. Uh, again, uh, a limited all-star. Uh, this, this one's actually kind of cool. I like this one. Yeah, so take a second, gander at our broker here. Fantastic, good work. All right, can you activate the uh, third line of text there, yes. the third ability, um, to return a card exiled with the first Bane Alley Broker? All right, so the answer to that is um, that is not how it works. And the reason is because of linked abilities again, right? So the, the first ability of Bane Alley Broker is linked to the return a card ability which means that if you're activating the return a card ability you can only return cards that um you exiled with the tap draw card then exile card ability mm -hmm. and so because because that is the case uh the quicksilver elemental is not going to be able to help you get cards that you exiled with the real uh uh, Bane Alley Broker's abilities. The OG, if yeah, you will. The, the, alpha, the Alpha Bane Alley Broker. Every time I say that, I keep forgetting that Magic has an Alpha set, so it's a little confusing, I suppose. Mm. Okay. That's rough. Sorry about you. Yeah. Now, um, do, ha, have you ever played with, with either of those cards before? <laughs> no. Uh, I'm a reasonable player. Well, I suppose so. So... This is another kind of interesting thing. If you notice, uh, if you take a look at the um, the the second ability on Bane Alley Broker, it, it says you can look at cards that were exiled with it face down, right? Mm -hmm. That that's that's what it says. Yes. Um, so that is a separate ability from the thing that exiles the card. So we were talking about like Gonti earlier, mm -hmm. and with with Gonti, it was uh, you know all part of the same ability. So does that mean that um, if, if the Bane Alley Broker dies, you cannot look at the cards anymore? Ooh, I do not know this one. 
Yeah. But my good friend David here yeah, has we, gone in. We, we have it. We have the rule pulled up here. Um, there, there is a rule in the comprehensive rule that says that exiled cards are kept face up by default. And cards that are exiled face down, players can't look at them unless a card lets them. Now, if Bane Alley Broker leaves the battlefield, that would mean that you can't look at any of the cards that um, it exiled because the, the Bane Alley Broker exiled those cards face down. Except it says that once a player is allowed to look at a card that's exiled face down, that player can continue to look at that card as long as it remains mm -hmm. exiled, even if the instruction allowing the player to do so no longer applies. And so because of that, even, even if the Bane Alley Broker dies, you can still look at cards that you exiled face down with it. And that's really good because, like, for example, if you had Quicksilver Elemental and Bane Alley Broker, uh, it wouldn't really make sense if you could, like, look at some of the cards that you exiled hmm. face down and not look at other of the cards that you exiled hope face you, down. Hope you grab the right one. You're yeah, yeah, you could get a lot of LECs. You get a lot of LECs that way. It's like, oh, yeah, this is the wrong pile. It's actually this pile. Mm -hmm. um, of course, uh, your, your opponent would have to... You know they, they wouldn't be able to tell, but um, you, you would you'd have to keep them well separated for your opponent's benefit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's that's kind of cool. Uh, it turns out that even even if the Bane Alley Broker leaves the battlefield, you can still look, even though the abilities are linked and uh, the the second ability is also linked to the the first one because mm -hmm. it, it also refers to cards that were exiled with Bane Alley Broker. Awesome. So okay, that's that was a good one. That was I, I like that question. I liked it when it came up with it. Uh, hmm. who's, whose turn is it? Um, uh, is, is I it think you're turn? asking me something. Okay, yeah. So, okay, my, my BFF, True Name Nemesis, has yeah, protection. Yeah, Legacy. Yeah, I do. I, I, I own eight True Name Nemesises, four of which are in the form of unopened Mind Seas theme decks. Hmm. And so, uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've got a couple of Nemeses. Very nice. And so I have a True Name Nemesis, and obviously protection from you. Okay. That's that's what I would that's what I would do. You right? could choose yourself. And I, well, let's say I also have a Grizzly Bears out. Just, okay. just for fun. Cool. Okay. Now you are gonna play a Mirror Weave. Awesome. Mirror, Mirror Weave is a, a sweet card. I was playing when this was printed and it did not see a whole lot of play because mm -hmm. there was there was fairies in the metagame. Um there there was there was some times when it saw some play though, so it was kinda sweet. Mm -hmm. So you are gonna mirror weave and mm -hmm. each other led each other creature is gonna become a copy of your sewer nemesis. Ooh. Right? Now you remember uh, sewer nemesis, right? Sewer nemesis. Uh, not not that card. David. Uh I mean th this card is also kind of sweet, but its its name is not sewer nemesis. But less exciting for this purpose. Yeah. So sewer ne nemesis, the important part here, um, as it enters, choose a player. Its you chose power toughness me. are equal to the number of cards in the chosen player's graveyard. Yes. Um I'm not churning through mine too fast. I'm gonna pick David. Okay. So I'm going to cast Mirror Weave on Sewer Nemesis. Yes. So everything's going to become a copy of this. Fantastic. This is awesome. It is. I'm really excited Isn't for it? this. Are you excited? Uh, I am. How's that True Name Nemesis doing? It's uh, not as excited. All right. So True Name Nemesis, uh, when these cards become copy of it, they gain all the copyable values of Sewer Nemesis here. Yes. Um, including its linked abilities. Yes. So Grizzly Bears, as it entered, it did not choose a player as per the Sewer Nemesis's <laughs> linked ability um and as a state-based action its power and toughness is going to be zero star zero. star zero zero r.i.p so sad yeah all right so grizzly bear goes grizzly bear no. obviously dies because like you know obviously it's going to have undefined power and toughness which is going to be zero power and toughness so true name nemesis here it did have a player when it entered it. the battle i chose him. it chose a player he yeah. chose me right and let's say that i have at least one card in my graveyard yeah everybody has cards in their graveyard so cool so Unfortunately for David, True Name Nemesis is going to be put into the graveyard. Why? So I chose a player. Uh, David's True Name Nemesis chose a player for David's True Name Nemesis linked ability. Yes. However, as it became a copy of Sewer Nemesis, yes. it no longer has that same linked ability as True Name Nemesis that chose me. Instead, it sees that True Name Nemesis has a chosen player that was not chosen and as such can't have a value yeah so ju just to be clear here um true name nemesis's abilities are linked the the choosing the choose a player and the protection from the chosen player are linked which means that the protection from the chosen player 
only refers to players that were chosen with the first ability. Sewer so name Nemesis Same is thing. also linked here yeah. and here. Which means that the power and toughness for true name Nemesis is only going to look at the player's graveyard that you chose when Sewer Nemesis entered the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a completely different and completely unrelated ability to true name Nemesis is when it enters the battlefield, choose a player. Which but means they, that they, they even though those abilities same. are the same, even though those are pretty much they're the same <laughs> ability, but even though that's the same ability, because it's Sewer Nemesis is choose a player ability and not true name nemesis is choose a player ability uh it, it does not count and because of that the chosen player is also undefined for true name nemesis when the game is trying to decide what its power and toughness is and true name nemesis will go the same way as grizzly bears too bad too so bad so yeah if you if you happen to have like eight mana lying around this is a really good answer for true name nemesis is to to take them out if, if you're having trouble with that card in your legacy yeah. deck and uh, just throw some dark grits or something in there. You'll yeah, I, you oh, get no, there. Mirror no weave needs the white white. Yeah, you, you need double white with, with mirror weave, so it, it could be kind of yeah, a challenge. Or, or blue. Just you, use it's those hybrid. Azurius rituals spells. Yeah, yeah, no problem. All right, so here's here's a good one. Uh, another, another fantastic one. Um, so like we, I have a monastery. Stage. I know this is a an anchor word yes, ability. Now. Yes, indeed, and and indeed because it's an anchor because it's an anchor word, it is a uh, uh, linked abilities. We know that. Yeah. And so I am. What, what did I choose in the question here? Okay, so I chose dragons. I like dragons. Uh, no problem. I think dragons is the fun one too. Dragons <laughs> is pretty good. So okay, I'm I I have monastery siege and I chose dragons and I also have because I'm. <laughs> I love I love the rules so much. I had to have an album <laughs> opalescence, right? So don't worry, guys. Don't worry. It's not. It's not it, that. It's not, it's that, not that opalescence question. If you want to see the answer to that opalescence question, you can take a look at Judging for the Winds video archive, where there is a continuous effects presentation uploaded just yesterday. Is it by this guy? Yes, continuous effects and three easy steps, and we definitely talked about opalescence plus humility. In continuous that. effects, also known as layers well there's there's layers and then there's timestamps and then there's dependencies so there's three easy steps layers is just the first one three easy steps to yeah. magic judging well no 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 no. three three easy steps to continuous effects all right <clears throat> so back to the question yeah so we, we have an opalescence which means that our monastery siege is a creature and that yeah. means that when i play a cyto shape I can I can choose a non-legendary creature for my monastery siege to become a copy of, mm -hmm. right? So I'm going to cyto shape my monastery siege into a uh, outpost siege. Outpost siege is pretty sweet, and so now the question is, which which abilities does does it have? So to clarify, uh, monastery cheese, monastery cheese, monastery cheese, <laughs> when it entered the battlefield, chose we, dragons. We dragon. Outpost Siege when it entered the battlefield. Outpost Siege, my bad. Outpost Cheese. That's what I want. Um, chose cons. Um, so as we mentioned, linked abilities are only linked to the ability uh, with anchor words that chose them. Yes. So Monastery Cheese entered and chose Dragons. Yes. However, when it becomes a copy of Frontier Siege... It loses geez, all the abilities. It no longer chose Dragons. No, I still chose Dragons. You with, chose with that ability. With the ability. But it no longer has that ability. Yeah, and it also doesn't have the abilities that are linked to it. Which it means also doesn't not, have like paying cons. extra or any other stuff. So you have a lame four drop four four. Three three. Or Monster Monster Speed Siege is three. Oh, is it? Yeah. I've, I've <laughs> you have a lame three three. Yeah, not even as good Look as you. Look at you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, again, again to, to make sure everybody's on the same page here, Monastery Siege becomes Jeez. a copy of Outpost Siege. Jeez. And when we cytoshape it, that means that in becoming a copy, it loses all its abilities that it used to have, and it has Outpost Siege's abilities now. Jeez. And as a result of that, um, even though I chose Dragons for the Monastery Siege, Dragons Jeez. is still chosen for Monastery Siege, Jeez. but it doesn't have the cons... Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, draw and discard. And it also doesn't have the dragon spells that uh, target me or permanents I control cost two more. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have either of those abilities now. Now what happens when it comes back? Yeah, when it comes back, I still chose dragons for it. And now it has the, the cons and the dragons abilities. And it's a creature. So now it'll it'll have the, the same abilities that it used mm -hmm. to have. The um, ones you chose originally. But yeah, so... I don't have any abilities at all on Monastery Siege now because I don't have the, the ones that I started out with. 
-hmm. And then I don't have a chosen cons of dragons, just like in our sewer nemesis, true name nemesis question. Even though it's the same ability, I didn't choose for the ability that it has now, which is the new ability. And because of that, uh, I, I need to have something chosen for the ability that's linked to the outpost siege cons and dragons but i don't have that because it didn't enter the battlefield as an outpost siege with the as outpost siege enters the battlefield choose cons and dragons i was trying so hard to make you say cheese too you, you tried um there, there's a there's a great story of a time when i was uh, making an announcement over the pa for a gp uh, it, was, it was like some side event, I believe, that, that I was associated with. Okay. And uh, a certain a certain other rules-loving judge um, who, who used to write Saturday School... Oh, other judge. Was, was, well, you know, his, his name will remain anonymous for, you know, in case he doesn't want to be involved in this. But uh, he, he was making faces at me the entire time that I was talking, and he was trying to get me to mess up. But I didn't, and uh, he actually yes. complimented me afterwards that I, uh, you know, was able to make it all the way through my announcement without cracking up. And it, it, it took a lot of willpower, but I, I was that. able to do it. You have I'm used to not looking. Content. Right? I'm, I'm not used to laugh. <laughs> I'm used to not having to laugh, so, uh, you know, we, we, right. we can do that. So let me hit you with one, this last one. Last example question, and boy, this is. Did we say we we probably didn't say the best for last. Maybe. No, sorry. Th this one, That's this one is okay, but like I grade this this question like maybe a three, three or four out of five. So so do we just not do it then? No, we're gonna do All it. All right, we got four Sounds minutes great. left. We're gonna talk about. So it. I have this fun card, Strionic Resonator. No, no, no. no. Let's talk about. Duplicate. I have this fun card, <laughs> Duplicate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because that's the one David pulled. Well, no, 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 no. Because that's where it he makes, wants it to makes start. Makes sense. I, I started with the Duplicate and then I moved to this Strionic so, Resonator. Duplicate here enters the battlefield. Trigger. Yeah, trigger ability. And hey, hey, which, I have a response. I have a response to that trigger ability. Which we're going to respond with. Uh, you sure are. Strionic. I want to double ability. exile. Double exile. So we're going to double sweet. exile. And that sounds fun to me. Yeah, it does. So duplicate's going to trigger. It's going to exile two of yeah. our yeah. creatures we'll here. We'll say a 3-3 three, three and a 2-2. Two, two, sounds great. Whatever. 3-3 three, three and a 2-2. Two, Hill two. giant, grizzly bears. Awesome. So you exile hill giant and grizzly bear. Um, so I now have a 5-5 five, five duplicate. You'd think so. Right? Uh, I, I believe that there, there was a period in Magic's history, I believe, when that was how it worked. Look, so I have a 2-2. Two, two, yeah. And I have a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. You put those together. It's 5. 5. Sure is. It sure is. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, if, we, if we take a look at the, the duplicate's current oracle text, uh, the, the old duplicate wording makes this a lot less clear. The current oracle text says, as long as a creature card exiled with duplicate is, or as long as a card exiled with duplicate is a creature card, duplicate has the power, toughness, and creature types of the last creature card exiled with duplicate. So because duplicate's ability has that uh, clause thrown in it, it is not going to try and combine the two of them like you, you might think. That, That's so smart. Yeah, it, it is smart. Um, it, I, I believe that there was a time when it, it, it did not used to work that way because it, they didn't have the uh, the, the change to it. Mm -hmm. And so if you if you look in the, the linked ability rules, um, no, that's not which one it is. Yeah, if, if these answers are used to determine the value of a variable, the sum of the answers is used. Um, mm -hmm. that this is this is 607.3. So uh, the ability r would refer to each of the exiled cards if it didn't have that specific thing that said the last card exiled with it. And so if an ability asks for any information about the exiled card, such as a characteristic or converted mana cost, or in this case, power and toughness, it gets multiple answers. So this could be, for example, your um, Isochron Scepter. Yeah, exactly. So with with the Isochron Scepter, we'll, we'll go back to the, uh, the original uh, card that we started everything off with. And so with Isochron Scepter, let's say we strionically resonated this in order to um, uh, exile an instant or sorcery or an instant twice. So then it says you may copy the exiled card. If you do, you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. In this case, because it doesn't say like the last exiled card, um, we, we have a situation where you, you get bonus, mm -hmm. bonus time. Yeah. Um, arcane. What, what, what was what was the name of it? Arcane mage. Something. What's the the thing where you like exile two spells. Hmm. Well, there there is a card that's like that. It's like when it enters the battlefield, you exile a spell. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, then, then you can like pay X and tap and play it. Chat, chat. Anybody in the chat wanna wanna help us out with the name of that card? Also, very important question for chat. Yeah, is I have gone clean shaven today. Yeah, in case hot, you didn't hot any or difference. not. Hot or not. All right, now, I, I thought that was one of those things where, like, you know, you weren't going to shave your beard until you made L2. Is that is that not what that was? That was 100% not what it was. Oh. I just strategically shave on, like, Friday nights or Saturdays oh. so that by the time Thursday comes around, I've got enough that I look mature. Because <laughs> otherwise, people will say, oh, what's that little kid doing teaching me about magic? I should be teaching him how to drive or something. Oh, man. Clarify, I can drive. <laughs> That's good because that was not immediately obvious from what you had said before. Yes. I can and drive, I can drink, I can play magic. So And I know things. I, I know some things too. For example, now I know what the name of that card that I was thinking of. Uh, I, I had to look it up while we were segueing, but it's Elite Arcanist. So uh, again, uh, another another example of a card um, where, and th- this is the, the card where I believe I first came up with with, uh, with this type of thing. So yeah, you, you can like Stronic Resonator and Exile two cards with this. And uh, yeah, you copy the Exiled card, which means you copy both of the Exiled cards and then you pay without paying the mana cost. I'm so X is the converted mana cost of the Exiled card, but of course uh, if there are two of them, then uh, you know that, that gets a little less value. Mm-hmm. This is not value town. Yeah, so again, if it needs to know uh, a characteristic about the exiled cards, such as the converted mana cost, it gets both of them, and it combines them together. So you'd have to pay like both both cards converted mana cost put together in order to get both cards. But you do get both cards, so that's kind of sweet. So that that's that's a, another example where where it uses that that rule both times. Mm-hmm. All right, so that is all of the stuff that we had prepared to talk about with today's chat. Yeah. Any any questions about anything that you've seen, any suggestions that you'd like to make for us, we would love to hear about them. Yeah, uh, each week when we pick our episode, we kind of just go off of what we think is going to be fun and exciting to talk about. And believe me, I have no problem coming up with sweet stuff to talk about for an yeah. hour. We just kind of say, I mean, we might as well throw darts at a board and say, all right, that one. So you know, we, we haven't we haven't done the oh uh, what we could do it. We just need a dartboard. Uh, someone was asking about donations earlier. If you have a dartboard, yeah, we we would be. Let me know. Um, we we would be very interested in a dartboard. If if anybody has access to something like that, um, that would be a, a really great tool that we could use. Uh, or or like one of those um um. Ooh. Yeah, That'd like yeah, like some something like this, like the wheel of fortune, where you, where you can like spin the wheel, spin the wheel of rules topics. Uh, that that would be another kind of interesting thing that, that we could do. Oh, oh gosh, any anybody who loves wheel of fortune videos, I have a great YouTube channel that you could uh, go to. They <laughs> they like talk about all the like statistics and stuff behind wheel of fortune and like whether it's a good strategy to do certain stuff or not. It's called Run the Numbers. Look it up. It's awesome. I I love watching his videos. And uh, so yeah, if, if anybody has any dartboards or wheels, we could use those to randomly determine topics. Or, or if there's a topic that just burns your soul afire with curiosity and you would love to hear two people talk about that topic for an hour, we would love to talk about whatever topic that you feel is interesting to you. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go ahead and tweet at us or message us over Gmail or YouTube and we would love to take those suggestions into account. We'd also love to see you follow us on Twitters and other and media Twitch platforms. Twitch, you can follow us on yeah. Twitch. We're not we're not affiliate or partner yet, so you can't subscribe yet. But you yet. can follow. You can follow us yet. Hey, we have we have some number of subscribers. I think it's a hundred is what you need to get to. So you know, I have no idea. I, I believe it's a hundred is, is what you can do if if, if you're a, a affiliate. You need a hundred is what is. So tell all your friends to follow us on Twitch, and then yeah. we can. You know, I, I don't know what you even get for making it up to that tier, to be honest. I don't so. know. I, I want, like, a mug. Mug would be pretty cool. And then when we're sitting here talking about rules, I can drink my hot chocolate and act like it's coffee, like yeah. I'm a grown adult. Yeah. I'm a grown adult. I, I promise <laughs> I you. I promise. <laughs> All right. Well, if that is everything that we wanted to talk about, thanks so much for joining us and tuning in. We had an awesome time tonight, mm-hmm. and we will see you next time. Mm-hmm. Bye. Have a good evening, everyone.